Mr. Sams? Yep. Uh, uh, like, what are you doing? Playing with a syringe. A syringe? Like, yeah. do you have, like, a drug problem? Or no, what are you doing I don't with a syringe? No, a drug problem. <laughs> just playing with it. Because you can learn a lot about gases from just playing with a syringe. See, look at this. See, there's nothing in here, right? A little tiny bit of gas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I pull this out. And uh, the pressure is really, really low in there. You know how I know it's low? I don't know. Because the atmosphere pushes it back in. Very it's cool, Mr. Sam. Yeah. You're like a uh, tinker band. And I can keep push this down, but I can't push it all the way down because really? I can only compress it so far. And it, oh, oh, see, I let yeah, the you let gas out. Here, I'm going to let it push oh, it. Oh, should we do it again? All right, let me well, zoom I'm going to let it push, push the plunger back at itself. Oh, nice. Or you can just, you know, let it go there. But, yeah, you can learn a lot about cool things about volume and pressure with gases and uh, just playing around with the syringe. So I just, whoops, like to fidget with things and play with stuff. And, okay. You know, so I'm what are we going to talk about today? Kind of wiggly. We're going to talk about uh, gases and how they work in terms of pressure and volume and temperature and things like that. Cool. Yeah. Mr. Sams, you sure like to play with things. I know. I get bored and fidgety. Yeah. yeah. Well, we learned what, what were you going to learn from there? Um, well, I've got a gas in that tube. Yeah. And, um, you know, if I seal up the end and I push on it, I can compress that gas. Yeah. And it'll increase the pressure. Uh, you're like trying to see how much pressure you could the, hold. Right, changes, yeah. and I change the volume doing that. That's um, cool. If I don't have the end closed, I can. If I open it up, I change the number of molecules that are in there. Did you turn the volume up? Like it's talking really loud. Not that kind of volume. Oh, what kind the, of volume? The amount of space that it takes up. Oh, volume, volume is space yeah. that it takes up. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. So, hey guys, today what we want to do is we want to talk about um, the properties of gases. Yeah. yeah, pretty short little podcast, I think. All right, take it up. Introduction to gases. Let's kind of get ourselves the properties of gases. Okay. These are our kind of topics for today. All right, first thing we, that you were playing with, Mr. Sands, we yeah. learned that gases are? Compressible. Well, compressible. Now, what does compressible mean? Um, basically, if you, um, like you can see in the picture oh, yeah, here, cool if, picture you, right here. if you shrink the volume of the container that, that they're in, you can actually push those gas molecules closer and closer together because there's a lot of empty space between yeah. gas molecules. Yeah, gases are very, very spread apart. Mm -hmm. um, this picture, in fact, over here, this picture illustrates that they're apart, but actually, this, this, they're much further apart than this. Oh yeah. This is way um, distorted in terms of the picture. So since they're so spread apart, you can compress a gas. Right, but solids and liquids, not so much. Yeah. All right, so compressibility is called is is the definition here is how much the volume of matter decreases with pressure. So that's kind of what we're talking about. So it's compressible. So that's pretty interesting. All right. Now, there are four things that we can measure when we talk about a mm -hmm. gas. There's four uh, variables, as I've said here. Yep. In the well, podcast. we just talked about two of them. Yeah. Which were what? Uh, volume, volume and, and pressure. And pressure. Okay. So let's take a look. Pressure, you already said. I'll right. just throw it up here. And um, the second thing we can do is uh, volume. volume. And volume can be illustrated by this cool picture right here mm -hmm. where we have a guy with a weather balloon. Yeah. Now, in terms of pressure, in Unit 6, we talked about different units that pressure is measured in right. and how we convert those. So you're just going to apply what you learned there to this. Right. Yeah, you, let's actually do a little review. Yeah. That's good thought. Well, let's do it at the end because we'll have them all okay. together. Okay. And then the third one is temperature. temperature. And this okay. is a picture, by the way, of the temperatures, uh, today's high temperatures in the Earth. Um, so actually it's February 9th, 2007, but oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today is January, no, February 1, February 1 uh, 2010. 2010. And so, um, yeah, you can see the temperatures um, here in uh, February of this state right here. But, well, it's just a few years ago. And you can see it's quite hot here. And then, of course, way up here, it's really, really cold. So temperature. And lastly, um, the moles of a gas. Right. What does that mean? Moles of That's gas? the actual number of particles that we're dealing with yeah. of mm -hmm. gas molecules. So, yeah, yeah. if you were to or one, atoms. two, three, four, five, start yeah. counting them, the little balls. More like, uh, you know, 10 to the power of you know 20 uh, and up yeah because we'll be doing yeah, because we're using lots of them now let's just kind of do a quick review what are the units that we're going to be working with when we talk about these different variables um, typically in here we're going to be talking in units of atmospheres atm atmospheres. but you may also see millimeters of mercury which is also the same thing as a tor and we, you may also encounter a kilopascal. And all Occasionally, it yeah, we'll yeah. see a KPA. And that's okay. actually becoming more and more the case yeah. in more textbooks. We'll, so. we'll, we'll talk about that, and, and we'll put some, yeah, we'll yeah. Some call and, out and on And we've that. done conversions on that in Unit 6. Now, volume, we measure volume using what? Uh, liters okay. is what we'll be doing it, but you may also encounter it in milliliters. All right, you see. You actually, in some of the problems in our in our uh, packet, I think you'll even some that are sometimes like in gallons and stuff, yeah. although very rarely. Yeah. Okay. Temperature? That's temperature. That's an interesting one. Right. Now, usually we measure temperatures in Celsius, but when we're dealing with gas laws, you always have to convert it to Kelvin. 
Always, 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 Okay, always. What are the temperature units? A Kelvin. 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 Always. Kelvin. Never Kelvin. Celsius ever. How do you convert from Celsius to Kelvin, Mr. Sams? Add 273. So 273 Celsius plus 273 is K. Do not do any math in Celsius. Never do math in Celsius? Well, unless you're just adding 273. But never do yeah, your yeah, calculations yeah. for gas laws that we're going to talk about in the next lesson in Celsius. It has to be in Kelvin. It's got to be in Kelvin! It's my new voice. I like it. Do you? It's kind of a, well, well, whatever is different. His, what's his name? Kermit the Frog. That's not Kermit the Frog. Oh, whatever. No. It's no. All right. Moles of a gas. This is Kermit the Frog. Oh, you're bad. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I have small children. We watch a lot of uh, Sesame Street. And moles a lot of, of a gas. Yeah. Moles of a gas. That's just uh, moles. Yeah, moles. The symbol for moles is M-O-L, yeah. as opposed to M-O-L-E. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty I'm easy. I'm surprised I got the Kermit voice out. I'm you're only about a third of the way down with my coffee with this morning. Kermit voice. All right. Now. There's something we also need to talk about is that gas particles are actually not affected by attractive forces. What in blazes do I mean by that, Mr. Sam? Um, basically, we have to assume that the little particles of gas molecules, mm -hmm. they don't actually attract or repel each other. So if I get two gas particles right here and yeah. here, there's no attractive force between yeah. them. Now, in reality, there is. But for our purposes in yes. studying gases, we're going to assume that there isn't. So we're yeah. making an assumption. We are, and and it's it's a it's a fair assumption because yeah. there is attractive force, but in it's, the conditions that we're going to be dealing with gases, there, it doesn't really matter all that much. So guys, if I have an oxygen molecule here, and I have an oxygen molecule here represented by my fists, then they don't connect together. When they connect together, that's attractive forces. And they don't repel either. And they don't repel either. That's correct. Yeah, we're just assuming that they don't. They're not affected by each all other right. at all. A couple things. I think these are just sort of intuitive. What? Why does pressure go up when you pump up a bicycle tire? So let's just kind of deal with some. Yeah. So you probably pumped up a bicycle tire, or maybe pumped up a car tire of some variety. So you got the guy pumping up his bicycle. Yeah. What, what's, why does the pressure go up? Well, we're adding more molecules of gas. Yes. We're introducing more, more particles, so more moles I, of gas. If this is my bicycle tire, a cross section of it, if maybe this is how many mo molecules are in the bicycle tire, but if you um, have the pump, this is a pump right here, and you add more, well, guess what? There's more of them in there. Yep. And what's pressure caused by? By collisions of the molecules with the side of the container. So, so as these molecules move and hit, you've yeah. got more molecules More molecules, hitting. more collisions, more, more collisions, pressure. pressure. More pressure. Yep. That's exactly right. All right. Well, let's take a look at this one. Here is an aerosol can. A little interesting question here. Why d does an aerosol can work? Uh, well, things in nature go from high to low. Right, high Ener low. Energy goes from high energy to low energy, or high hot temperature, to cold, hot to cold, hot, right? Mm -hmm. Well, gases move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Okay, so inside good. the can, we have gas at very, very high pressure. So this is at high pressure yep. already, when, we, when you buy it. Right, when you buy yeah. it. When you mm -hmm. push the, the nozzle down, it provides an outlet for those molecules to get out, and the molecules go, hey, pressure's less on the outside. I'm going out because that's what I do, because I go from high to low. So here we have low pressure, mm -hmm. and here we have high pressure. Right. Yeah, and that, it, it's, it's pumped in there, if you will, um, when they manufacture it. Right. Okay. All right, let's do another question, Mr. Sams. Okay. I'll see if you can start and stump you here. Mm. Why does the pressure in a can increase when you push on the plunger? Well, I don't know. You stumped me. That's a tough one. All right, so here we guys, we've got a, a plunger. It's kind of like, this is what you were doing at the beginning right, of the with podcast. The, with, the with the syringe. The, with the syringe deal. And you were pushing down on it, and the pressure was like getting too, you could hardly hold right, it down. Right, there comes a point where I can't push it down any further because the pressure pushing back is too much. So all I'm doing when I do this is I'm pushing the molecules closer and closer together. All if right. they're closer together, there's more of a chance, if this chamber is smaller, I guess, I should say, there's more of a chance for right. collisions with the outside, and the pr and the pressure goes up. Right. Yeah. And more more uh, options to hit the sides. Mm -hmm. There's less side to deal with. Right. So the pressure is going to go up. Mr. Sam, let's uh, let's uh, finish with just one little interesting thing here. Okay. Why does the sealed can explode when heated? Here, here's what happened. There's a car right here, and you, um, take a look at the broken window of this car. Think it was hit by a hailstorm? Kids playing ball. Gunshots. Nope. Nope. And nope. If you click on the photo to enlarge, which I've already done, you'll see the culprit, a pressurized can. This pressurized can got heated up. It was a hot day hmm. in the summer probably, and it got hot. So what happens when you heat up a can? Uh, it's well, pressurized. Yeah, well, if you heat them up, if we think in terms of kinetic molecular theory, those molecules move faster. And if those molecules move faster, there's more collisions, and they're hitting the wall with a greater velocity, meaning more pressure inside the can. So if the pressure goes up inside of a can and goes way up, 
it can explode. Yeah, Which eventually is, it's not going to be able to hold the amount of pressure in there and it's going to fail at its weakest point. You've probably guys seen the warning labels on aerosol cans. Do not incinerate. Do, Do not, not throw it into fire. Do not let it go above 120 degrees. And guess what? They did that. They had it inside a car and you get 120 degrees inside of a car on a hot summer day and that's what did it. It exploded and it exploded the back of this car window. That's kind of cool. That yeah, is. Wow. Okay, hey guys, the very quick podcast, just a quick introduction to guesses. Mm. We're talking about. How was that? How was that? I don't remember. Uh, Probably go, go back to your, your French, Russian, German. All right, they're going to be done with the gases because the gases are done. Yeah, that one. Yes, okay. All right, we'll see you in gases. Cheers.